Hello and welcome back. Let us try to understand bivariate analysis. When there are two variables or two features, and if we want to understand the relationship between those two variables or features, we have to do bivariate analysis. The analysis depends on the two features we are trying to understand. If two features are numerical, then we have to do correlation test. If one feature is categorical and another feature is numerical, we may have to do either chi-square test or ANOVA test. So it depends on the input feature type and the output feature type. We know that in machine learning, when you are using one feature to predict another feature, we call the feature which we are using to predict is called as in input feature or the independent feature. The feature we are trying to predict is called as dependent feature or the output feature or the target feature. In the previous example we used salary is the output feature, experience is the input feature. When both features are numerical and we want to know whether the experience is able to predict salary or not, there should be some relationship between these two variables, experience and salary. If both are numerical, we, we can do correlation test and understand the importance of the input feature in predicting the target variable or the output feature. If the input feature is categorical and the output feature is uh, categorical, then we may have to do chi-square test. If the input, input feature is categorical and output feature is quantitative or numerical, then we may have to do ANOVA test. If the input feature is quantitative or numerical and the output feature is categorical, we may have to do chi-square test. So we will see all these examples in coming sections. We will see all these examples in coming, se coming sessions. Let us first concentrate on two quantitative variables and their relationship. Or two numerical variables and their relationship. So quantitative to quantitative variable relationship can be understood using correlation test. Before we understand correlation test, we need to understand covariance and its disadvantages. Let us jump in. So covariance actually tries to understand two features, you know how two features vary together. It, it basically explains the linear relationship between two features. If you take experience and salary and you did a, you know, you calculated covariance between these two variables, it actually shows you the linear relationship, how strongly they are, they both are linearly related. We will get more clarity on linear relationship in this section. And uh, the covariance actually gives you the direction but not the strength. That means the co covariance actually calculates the covariance outcome is a number which may be between minus infinity and plus infinity. If the number is too big of a negative number, then the relationship is you know, negative. That means one variable is increasing, the other variable, variable will decrease. It is like, you know, if the experience is increasing, if the salary is decreasing, then those two variables are in negative relationship. When you calculate covariance, you will get a negative number. It is not the case. We know that when experience grows, the salary also increases, right? So experience and salary are going to have a positive relationship. When you actually calculate covariance between experience column and the salary column, you will get a positive number. So when you get a positive number, you know that it's a positive relationship. That means one increases, the other also increases. When you get a negative number, when you calculate covariance, you know that these two variables are in negative relationship. When one is increasing, the other is decreasing. When there is no relationship at all, you will get zero. But how strong it is, you don't know until and unless you have a third variable. So let us try to look at the formula here and then try to look at an example, you know, to understand better. So the formula for covariance is like this, xi minus xi bar, yi minus yi bar, sigma i is equal to 1 to n, n number of you know, rows are there, you have two columns and n number of rows are there. X is the, you know, suppose that X is the input variable and Y is the output variable and you are trying to understand the relationship, then you can substitute the X bar is the mean of X values, the experience and Y bar is the mean of salaries, right? 
you substitute these values and you get the covariance let us see let us try to understand the covariance with uh, some examples here so we have taken a data set with employee ids designation experience salary and aggressive behavior activity score and lines of code i think you all know the you know designation experience and uh, salary the aggressive behavior is that you know we try to calculate some score for each employee on the way they you know behave that they are, if the aggression is more the score is going to be more if the aggression is less the score is going to be less the activity score right in our office we conduct you know some activities like uh, participating in some social activities and other things depending on the experience level and the activities they participate in we actually calculated some score and you know kept it here if the activity score is more that means the person is participating in more activities you know more actively and lines of code you know how many lines of you know coding python coding or java coding the particular person is doing that also we kept it as a feature in the data set so let us try to understand the covariance between experience and salary experience and aggressive behavior score experience and activity score if you look at the score right between experience and salary which is very high that means with the experience increasing the salary is increasing and their their linear relationship is very strong you know the number is you no know, far from zero and a big number right if you look at experience and aggressive behavior it is negative with the experience increasing the aggressive behavior is reducing right the person's aggression is reducing with the experience increasing right that's generally happens uh, with the human beings right the the way we grow old the aggression reduces and the experience and activity score also with the experience increasing the number of activities the person is participating is also reducing but when you look at the scores they are not too big they are negative numbers but not too big that means there may be a non linear relationship or the negative relationship may be not that strong when it is close to zero the negative relationship is not that strong so we cannot say that two you know higher experienced people are not participating in too many activities by looking at this score because it is actually kind of close to zero and a small number okay so these are the scores we calculated right when compared you know, if you see these three these three scores you can say that uh, salary is very strongly related to experience when compared to other two variables so when you calculate covariance the salary is very strongly related to experience than other variables so by looking at the score right there is no limit there right if, if it is between 1 and minus 1 maybe we can say close to 1 so it is too strong close to 0 it is to you know no relation and close to minus 1 you know very weak relationship but here the range of covariance is between minus infinity and plus infinity so we cannot actually determine how strong it is until and unless we have other features to compare like this okay covariance only determines the direction that's what is the is the mean if it is positive positively related negative negatively related only direction it says there is no you know uh, it cannot strength cannot be you know exactly measured with the covariance okay the covariance is maximized when two variables are similar right if you, if you take same two variables and try to calculate covariance you will get a big number zero no relationship when they are you know orthogonal you know the negative relationship will be there right when we are talking about vectors here the covariance is maximized when two vectors are similar when i say vector a data point you know, x1 y1 is there if you just denote it as a point it is just a point on a two dimensional scale but if you want to if you say x1 y1 as a vector it will have a direction and length also right generally the direction is going to be let me draw that and show you so you now this is a two dimensional space and if i have you know this is 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 if 
you have a data point 2 2 right it is just a data point if you say data point but if you say it's a vector right vector will be denoted like this if you say a vector it will have the direction and length also right the direction is like from origin it is actually moving you know in that direction and then the length can be calculated using Pythagoras theorem. This is like 2 and this is 2 and the length is going to be 2 square plus 2 square like 4 plus 4 is 8. Square root of 8 is the length. So here we are saying two vectors are similar right. The covariance is maximized. So if you have one more vector vector which is actually you know, maybe 3 3 right. 3 3 is another vector maybe let me take another color. Let me take another color, right, T3, 3, 3 is another data point or vector, right, 3, 3, then, you know, the covariance is going to be maximal because they both are going in same direction and things like that, right. If, uh, no, no, if uh, they are orthogonal, right, if you take another color, right, if they are orthogonal, if, they, if one is perpendicular to other, right, this is actually kind of, uh, uh, 3 minus uh, 3 minus 3 and 3 right minus 3 comma 3 okay, that is a vector minus 3 comma 3 which is actually orthogonal so the you know the, the then it they will be in negative relationship okay so that is kind of you know vector thing there let us look at the code example to create the Covariance thing. So let us look at covariance with code example. Here I have imported pandas, numpy, matplotlib, and c1. You know all these modules. And I have taken the data set and let us look at the head, right? Head of the data set uh, to see how many uh, uh, first five values here, right? And then let us try to calculate the covariance. In series object, we have got the covariance method COV. I have taken you know, the experience and then to the COV method, I am passing salary and it calculates the covariance. And for the aggressive behavior and experience, for the experience and active activity score, right? If you actually use data frame, and data frame also has got a you know COV method and try to calculate. It takes all the numerical columns and tries to calculate the covariance. So if you see this matrix, right, it's a symmetric matrix. That means the lower triangular values are going to be equal to the upper triangular matrix because experience to experience is the covariance here. Experience to salary is the covariance here. Again, if you see this value, it is salary and experience covariance, right? Like that, it's going to be a symmetric matrix. So when you have too many columns, Looking at numerical values like this is going to be a bit confusing. So visualization will actually help. You know, we have in C in Seaborn we have a method called as heat map, which actually generates a heat map like this. See that? By looking at the colors, right, you can understand which one is very strongly positively correlated and which one is very strongly negatively correlated. See this, the green color actually denotes the negative correlation. The red color, you know, if the color is moving towards red, right, it is actually denoting the positive correlation. So, salary and, uh, you know, experience, salary and salary, you know, anyway, the variable and variable itself are going to be very strongly positively correlated. But salary and experience are very strongly correlated. And uh, lines of code and salary are very negatively correlated, you know, with the experience growing, the, the, the salary growing, lines of code is you know reducing or I can say with the experience growing the lines of code is re reducing here when you look at these scores it is actually misleading right you can actually you can actually infer that with the salary increasing the lines of code is decreasing that's what it is actually like looks like right but it is not the true with the experience increasing the lines of code is decreasing and with the experience increasing the salary is increasing the experience is called as confounding variable, right? So we'll talk about confounding variables a little more at the end of this session.
So that's about uh, the covariance. We'll cover correlation in the coming session. Thank you.